I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this. Oh my god. Well, welcome back everybody to the the ATR Bar Talk segment where we gauge our confidence in NHL topics based on our choice of drink, a beer, a shot, or are you buying everybody around because you're so jazzed up for it? Well, it's a good thing we got Mr. Anthony Larocco back because one of the questions that he asked Dave Paniota when he was on with us, you can always rewind us and check it out or there'll be a separate segment we'll have for that. He asked about Vladimir Tarasenko being either a New York Islander or a New York Ranger next season. Anthony, I got to go to you. Well, um, it seems like it, after listening to him, it will more so be the Islanders and the Rangers. But, um, um, you know, I'm going to say beer. Uh, obviously, not, not, not a round because there's no guarantee that happens, but definitely not a shot either as there's a lot of smoke involved here with Tarasenko to the Islanders. So um, falls right in the middle there with the beer. And, hey, listen, like he said, the Islanders are going to have to send back a player with similar salary. Jordan Eberle seems to be that guy that the Islanders are going to use to move out, whether it be Tarasenko or, or just for cap space. But, um, you know, and then he referenced there, there could be a couple other pieces there. So we don't know what the, what a full deal will look like. Because uh, I also heard stuff about that Vince Dunn could possibly be in a deal and could be a little bigger. But um, listen, Tarasenko, there's there's a lot of risk. You know, he's coming off those shoulder surgeries. Uh, but like Peñona said, he has, he has something to prove. Um, he feels now after this third surgery where the act where the surgeon actually fixed, that the, fixed the issue that the blue surgeon didn't do the first two times, which to me is just unfathomable how they could miss something like that um you know Uno, it, he could pay off if his shoulder's 100 percent. the only thing is we really won't know until you know he hits the ice and uh see what he has but um he's a he's a dynamic scorer that's for sure when healthy um but i mean it could help improve the islanders let's face it tarasenko at his best is a lot better than jordan eberly so you know it, that's a that's a sniper that the islanders need um you know i'm just not sure you know, what other offers the Blues will get from other teams. The only positive is uh, I think Tarasenko only has like five or six teams he's willing to wait to go to. So uh, that plays a large role too. But um, yeah, I'm assuming we'll get our answer to all this probably after the expansion draft, possibly sooner. Um, you know, a lot of variances there that could that could lead to why the Blues would want to do it sooner. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical about it, but you know, I'm I'm also a little cautiously excited because Tarasenko, what he can be. But, um, yeah, beer. Beer. Uh, Felk. I'm going to go beer here. I, I, you can't say shot. You can't say uh, rounds, like Anthony said. Um, if it was just the Rangers, I would say shot. Um, if it, Even if it was just the Islanders, I'd say beer. But it just... I don't know how they make that work. And they want to bring back Kyle and Palmieri too, like like Dave uh, you know, spoke about before. Uh, we've, we've talked about that before as well. I, I just, I don't know how this works. And I know that the Islanders, I believe are on the list of teams that he's willing to wave to. But, and, and I, I, know, I know I've said for years that they've needed to get a pure sniper and Tarasenko would be that, but I would be very, very afraid of that shoulder. And I know that they fixed the problem, but how much damage has been done to that shoulder? How much? And you know what? He's getting up there at age. He's getting closer to 30. I, I know he has only a couple years left on his deal. So then you're going to have to make a big decision in two seasons, whether to sign him or not. And then you're going to have to pony up five, six years at that point give him a contract until he's what 36 37 years old somewhere in that range yeah i don't know i mean i think it might be best for the islanders to kind of let oliver wallstrom develop into the sniper that he is and i know jordan everly has only scored 30 goals in his career once and that was back in 2012 but he tends to be more of a playmaker yes he does but he gives you 25 goals you know he's got great chemistry with Matt Barzell, and you know that he can play within this team's system. That you, know, you, you got to worry about fits too. That's a big thing. This Islanders team is not a team of of marquee talents. Matt Barzell is a talented player, but is he an elite player? No, not by any means. But what every single player on that team does 
is fit to the sum of all of the parts, and it forms one well-oiled machine. As much as I hate to say that, being a Ranger fan, mm -hmm. they are a well-oiled machine. They We're hoping we will be saying that uh, next year. Yeah. So, but I just I I like Vladimir Tarasenko. He's not a bad defensive player, and he probably could. But why? Why, when you have a player that you know can be somewhere, somewhat within that same stratosphere, at the very least, that looks like he's ready to make a jump? And and I'll reference him again. The hockey guy, Shannon, made a list of breakout players that he expects to have big, big years this upcoming year. And, and Oliver Wallstrom was on his list. So I, I kind of agree with him there. I think Oliver Wallstrom is primed for a bigger year this year. I think you're looking at 20 to 25 goals given the ice time and the power play time. So I, I just, considering the cap problems that they're lined up to have, does adding Tarasenko really make sense for them even if they send out Eberle? I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It, to me, it, I, I'm i going to say beer here, but I, I really don't think the Islanders end up with him I, 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 unless they're able to, to to make some sort of sorcery cap-wise. So. That was a very, very long answer, so I'm going to keep uh, mine short, which is just, I'm yeah. going to say beer. He could be the power play, the power play uh, sniper guy that they need, the trigger man. But other than that, um, yeah, I would, I would, I would let Wallstrom develop as well. Moving on to headlines that were made yesterday. Like, the Duncan Keith trade has already won the award for the worst offseason trade. I'll start this off. I gotta buy everybody around on this. Oh my God. How do you not retain any salary? The only thing that shocked me about this trade was that I found he was only, only making like $5.7 million. But Duncan Keith, who's not Duncan Keith anymore, they didn't retain any salary, really? and Caleb Jones, and you gave up a draft pick? Ken Holland was channeling his inner Peter Shirelli. Over to you, Anthony. Yeah, this, uh, I know it's only been really this one trade, really, but yeah, definitely round. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys saw later at night uh, it, that LeBron actually said the full trade ended up being where some like prospect went back to uh, Edmonton with Keith. Um, but even, even still, this is a bad. This is a bad deal. Keith's going to be 38 on the 16th, so a couple more days, um, and he's he's a shell of himself. I mean, he could still skate, but he's a shell of himself. Um, and you know, the the Oilers have other areas that they need to use that money to improve on. They still only have the only goalie they have in the contract is Koskinen. They're going to probably resign Mike Smith, which is a bad idea. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I just think that. This was a bad deal. I mean, if they could have got Chicago to retain, a, you know, some salary, then fine. But the fact that they didn't, and they gave up a third on top of it, as well as Caleb Jones, it's just—I don't know. All I'm gonna say is, it's like, it seems like Peter Chiarelli was back uh, at the helm there yesterday. Yeah, uh, I, I gotta say that might be the comment uh, of the. Oh, well, it's of the hour so far. The yeah. day is still very young. All right, yeah. John. O Oiler is gonna oil is probably the the one comment that I can find that would sum this up in a nutshell because it, it, it is a bad deal. But I'll preface this by saying that if you're trading for Duncan Keith to play 16, 17 minutes a game in a number four to a number six role, it would be a good deal if Chicago retained like a, like a couple of million on that because you could tolerate him at that salary. He's not an, he's not a top bearing defenseman anymore. He's not a one two three. He's a four or worse. And if you have him with a good partner, he can play on a second pairing. He could possibly even anchor a third pairing. But at 5.538 million, no way. Terrible deal for Edmonton. You might as well have kept Shirelli if you were going to bring in Holland to, to do these types of moves. Uh, and listen, I'm not high on Caleb Jones. I'm not. Uh, he's 24 years old. He hasn't really shown you many signs of being anything more than a third-pairing defenseman. But 
if you're going to go out and spend $5.5 million on the corpse of Duncan Keith, <laughs> I, I mean, you're, you're piss poorly managing your cap when you have other things that you have to do. And you could have went after Seth Jones. You could have ponied up assets and went after Seth Jones. I'm not saying Seth Jones would have went there, but you had his brother. You had a bargaining chip. Not only did you take on all that cap, but you took the one bargaining chip that you had and sent it away because you could have used that to bring in Seth Jones. Oh, Seth, do you want to come play in Siberia? No. We have your brother. Okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> like, what were they doing? Was it, is that a bargaining chip or is that a ransom negotiation? Both. <laughs> 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 it's it terrible. And Seth, we have your brother. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Holland is actively doing everything he can to tarnish his legacy as a general manager. Because his last, I would say, half a decade, possibly more, he's done everything he can to just absolutely make a fool of himself. I'm sorry. One year after this, he's gone. One year after this, he has two years left, Dave. Yes. But yes, Siberia, it just, no no salary retained, nothing, just, oh. yeah, this is, this is a round. I'm, Hey, does everybody want a day drink with me? Because I'll, I'll go put some vodka yeah. in it, and I'll buy everybody rounds. Because let, let's day drink. Let's have fun with this. Yeah, you know what? I, I got some whiskey, uh, single malt um, uh, Irish whiskey. I forgot the name of it. I think it was Keats that I had. I got to go check the bottle. A friend of mine gave me for uh, my birthday a month late. The Lightning will three-peat and circumvent the salary cap again. Anthony, got to go to you. Uh you know what? Shot. Then they're, they're not winning three in a row. It's, it's way too hard in this league. And two, um, their team is going to get broken up to some extent this year. Um, I know Julian Breezewa had his end of season press conference today. He mentioned that Goudreau and Coleman that played the way they played deserve raises. And he said, but problem is, I don't I don't know if we're going to be the team to be able to give it to them. So they could lose both those guys who are key third line players. Uh, and then there was a nugget Peñota said about Stamkos because they gotta they get, they gotta unload the biggest salary somehow. So um, I just don't see them having the pieces next year to do it all again. Um, and circumventing the cap, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe Kucherov will get surgery on his on his uh, on his other hip, and he'll be out until the playoffs. But um, I just I just don't see them three winning a three in a row. Um, like I said, it's just way too hard in this league. There's too many other good teams, and they're gonna lose probably a good. You know, four players off their roster, or may or maybe more. So, um, I mean, Savard. I don't know if they got money to keep him. Like I said, Goudreau, Coleman. Um, you know, who knows what happens with with Kalorn, uh, Tyler Johnson. This could be the year he goes. So, um, after being waived last year. So yeah, I I don't see it at all. I mean, they, don't get me wrong. They're still going to be a good team, but they're not winning again. Shot. Phil. I'm shaking my head because you you changed the, the the topic, the title of it, and you completely misworded what I'd put down. Okay. So the 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 the, the, the topic was supposed to be the lightning will three three peak regardless of their cap crunch. That was oh, all right, all right. Not circumvent the cap. So <laughs> the the I was gonna say beer because I think it's possible that they're able to keep a majority of the pieces, they might lose a piece like a, uh, like a Maroon or a Goudreau or a Coleman. And yes, Ariana, that is absolutely true. They, they still took Edmonton into the cleaners. But getting back to what we were talking about, they're going to have a cap crunch and they're going to lose some, at least one, possibly multiple, multiple pieces. The lightning dented the cup and they're about to put the dent into their team because they have a cap crunch. So I'm going to say beer just because I think that this team is eventually going to have the talent still to be right at the top of the league. Um, but it might be tough to make that 3 P. We haven't seen a 3 P in 40 years almost. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna say beer here. Last team to win three in a row. You can Island. hear Anthony's erection right now. So... Uh, I used that joke last week, but still. By the way, Sean, uh, four Red Bulls. I think you had a Red Bull of Aka. You got to like eventually get yourself off the Red Bulls. Otherwise, you're going to have heart palpitations. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, I'm gonna say no. Uh, they're not winning the Stanley Cup next year. They might challenge a little bit, but they're gonna lose a lot of their depth, and their depth is the reason why they won the cup. Just ask Montreal. Uh, are, can you get somebody to play with Yanni Gorn? Yeah, but you remember and, that, they have pieces that are ready to come up and fill those roles, like an Ar- Alex Barry Belay. He can come up and and uh, he can play. Um, you've got other guys in the minors like uh, Boris Kachuk, Taylor Radish, other guys that can come up and play in those roles. So, yeah, I mean, you surround those guys with the right players, they can end up giving you the production that those guys gave you. Did you like that video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.